So we've done bonding and naming of ionic compounds, and we've done naming of covalent compounds. So now we're going to learn how to draw covalent compounds, or draw how they bond. And we call these drawings Lewis structures. So we'll hear them like Lewis dot diagrams, or Lewis dot structures, or Lewis structures. They're all the same thing. They were developed by a scientist named Lewis. Really, really quick to review though, I want to go over what makes something ionic and what makes something covalent. Remember, an ionic compound contains both a metal and a nonmetal. And when the bonding happens, there's an actual exchange of electrons in order to reach that octet or to reach the eight valence electrons. So for instance, if we have calcium and chlorine, our calcium has two valence electrons, it's going to give its valence electrons to the two chlorines to make the calcium a positive charge and the chlorines each negatively charged. And then it's those positive and negative attractions that hold the compound together. With a covalent molecule, covalent molecules are made of only nonmetals. When they need to reach eight valence electrons to reach their octet, they're going to share their electrons. So we're pooling all of the electrons together and then dividing them up so that everybody can have eight. And when that happens, they're going to end up sharing electrons. And those electrons, those shared electrons, are called bonds. So our shared electrons are called bonds. So there are a lot of requirements and there are a lot of rules and this comes through practice and process and it'll get easier and easier the more we do it. But it's going to look pretty intimidating here at the beginning. But let's go through the requirements for a covalent uh, compound, a Lewis structure, to be valid. First of all, we have to show all of the valence electrons. For all of the elements, all of the atoms in a compound, we have to show all of their valence electrons. Usually, all of the electrons are paired. More often than not, electrons are going to be in pairs. You will rarely have a single electron. Usually, all atoms need eight valence electrons. The main exception that we're going to see is hydrogen. Hydrogen only needs two valence electrons. Sometimes, we can have what are called multiple bonds in order for everything to reach eight. So sometimes you'll have what's called a double bond or a triple bond, where instead of sharing two electrons, two atoms are going to share four or six electrons by having multiple bonds. And then finally, each bond always has two electrons. So whenever you draw a bond, you're indicating that there are two electrons being shared between those two atoms. So each bond counts as two electrons. Okay, so let's go through the rules. We're going to go through these step by step, and then we're going to apply all of the rules to different examples. The very first thing that you're going to want to do is count all of your valence electrons. So we'll go through, based on the periodic table, how many valence electrons does each atom have, and look at the total. So that's the pooling all of the valence electrons together. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to figure out the central and the terminal atoms. So what's going to be in the middle of your molecule and what's going to be on the outside. So central is going to be in the middle, terminal will be on the outside. Hydrogen atoms are always, always, always terminal. You will never have a hydrogen in the middle of your molecule. Carbon atoms are always your central atoms. In the molecules that we're going to be drawing, your carbon will always be in the center. So carbons are always central. Once you kind of arrange them, then you're going to start drawing your bonds. So you're going to arrange them first, then you'll draw your bonds, you'll draw those connections, and you're going to start with just single bonds. You'll connect your terminal to your central atoms with single bonds. You'll subtract those single bonds from your total number of valence electrons, and then using your extra valence electrons you have, you'll start completing the octets. You'll start with the outside atoms, and you're going to add electrons until each atom has eight. So once all of your terminal atoms have eight valence electrons, including the electrons in the bonds, then if you still have extra electrons, you'll go to your central atom and add electrons until your central atom has eight valence electrons. Now at this point, you might have hit zero. You have no electrons to put in place. 
All of your terminal atoms have eight valence electrons. Your central atom has eight valence electrons. Some of those might be in bonds, but you've reached the end of your electrons. That's fine. If you are out of electrons and your central atom does not have eight valence electrons, that's when you need to pull in additional bonds. So instead of an outside atom having a pair of electrons, that pair of electrons will become a bond with the central atom. We're going to go through examples that cover every single one of these rules, so we'll look at how they're all applied when we actually draw Lewis structures. So our first example is nitrogen triiodide, Ni3. So our first step is to figure out what the total number of valence electrons we have to work with. So nitrogen has five, and we have three iodines, and each iodine has seven valence electrons. So these numbers came from where they are in the periodic table. Nitrogen has five, each iodine has seven, and we have three of them total. It means we have a total of 26 electrons that we need to place. So that's step one. Step two is to figure out our central and terminal atoms. Our central atom is usually going to be our single atom. So in this case, it's going to be the nitrogen. So that's going to be our central. Our terminal will be our eyes, and we'll arrange those around. Now, once we've arranged them, we're going to connect each with single bonds. So we're just going to draw single lines to represent the bonds. Now, each of these bonds represents two electrons, so we've already used six of our total electrons. So I'm going to keep a running total over here on the side. I started with 26. I've used six, and so now I'm down to 20. Now that I have them connected, I'm going to start with their outside atoms and add electron pairs until each have eight. So this one already has two from the bond. So there's four, there's six, there's eight. So I've used six more electrons. I've already counted for these guys. I've used six more, so I'm going to subtract six from over here. That leaves me with 14. I'm going to do the same with this guy. So it already has two. There's four. There's six. There's eight. So I've used six more electrons. Remember, I've already counted the ones in the pairs. That leaves me with eight. So I'm going to start over here and do the same thing. There's two in the bond, there's four, there's six, there's eight. I've used six more valence electrons. So I have two more electrons that need a home. Now, each of my terminal atoms has eight. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. My nitrogen, though, just has two, four, six, so it needs two more electrons. So I draw a pair there. And those are my last two electrons. Now I've used all my electrons, and each atom has eight electrons. So that's how we would draw the Lewis structure for Ni3. Let's look at our second example. Our second example is carbon dioxide, so CO2. Our first step is to figure out how many valence electrons we have. Carbon has four. Oxygen we have two of them, and each oxygen has six. So two times six is 12, plus four gets us 16 total. So we have 16 total electrons that we're working with. So we need to find homes for all three of those. Now, our second step is to figure out our central and terminal atoms. We said carbon will usually be our central atom. So we're gonna put carbon in the middle, and we're gonna put our oxygens on each side. The next thing we're going to do is connect them with a, one bond each. So we have all, everything connected now just with single bonds. So we started with 16 electrons. We've now used two in each bond. So we have two, four, which leaves us with 12 left to place. So I'm going to start with my outside. I'm going to put two, four, six. So now I've used six electrons. But this oxygen has eight, it has two from the bond, four, six, eight. Now I'm going to do the same with this oxygen. I have six electrons left, so two, four, six, eight total. I've added six more. So I've used all of my electrons. I'm down to zero. My two oxygens 
have eight valence electrons, but my carbon only has four. My carbon needs four more electrons. So these electrons from this oxygen are going to become a pair. So we're gonna have a double bond with our oxygen. So we draw two lines. And now we only have four pairs. We have four electrons just as dots. We took these dots and we made them a bond. So now we have two bonds and two pairs of electrons. We're gonna do the same on this side. So we took this pair of electrons and instead of it being only on oxygen, we said, let's share it with carbon. So we draw two lines to show the two bonds and then we have two pairs of electrons on the oxygen. So now our oxygen still have eight, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. But in this case, so does our carbon. Now our carbon has two, four, six, eight valence electrons. So we've used all of our electrons and everybody has eight. Let's look our, at our next example. So we have CH2F2. Our first task is to count valence electrons. So carbon is going to have four. We have two hydrogens. Each hydrogen has one valence electron. We have two fluorines. Each fluorine has seven valence electrons. So we have 14 plus two plus four gets us to a total of 20 electrons to work with. So once we've counted up our total valence electrons, we're gonna find our central atom. Our central atom is going to be carbon. So we're gonna draw carbon in the middle. And we're gonna arrange our other atoms around it. It doesn't really matter what order they're in. We're not really gonna to be too concerned about that. So now that I've arranged my terminal atoms around my central atom, I'm gonna draw my bonds. So now I have single bonds. So I started with 20 electrons. I've used two, four, six, eight of them because each bond has two electrons. So I subtract eight from my total and I'm left with 12. So now I'm gonna take my electrons and I'm gonna start filling the octets. Now remember the hydrogens only need those two electrons. I'm not gonna add any more electrons to the hydrogens. Instead, I'm gonna add electrons to my fluorines. Now fluorine has two, four, six, eight. I've used six more electrons, so I'm gonna subtract that from my running total. This fluorine still needs eight, so I'm gonna add six more. So now it has two in the bond, four, six, eight. I've added six more. Now I'm out of electrons, so let's double check and make sure I've met all my requirements. Each of my fluorines have eight, we've checked that already. The hydrogens are good because they only need two, so they're good with just the bonds. You'll never have extra electrons on hydrogens. And my carbon is also good. It has two, four, six, eight valence electrons. They just all happen to be in bonds. That's okay. Okay, let's look at our last example, H2CO. First thing we're gonna do is add up the valence electrons. So we have two hydrogens, each with one, a carbon, which has four, an oxygen, which has six, and so we have 12 total valence electrons to work with. So carbon's gonna be my central atom because carbon is usually the central atom. So we'll put carbon in the middle and we'll put hydrogens and an oxygen around the outside. Okay, so now I've arranged them. I'm gonna connect everything with single bonds. And I have a running total of 12. I've used two, four, six, which leaves me with six left to place. So I'm gonna put them on my terminal atoms. I'm not gonna put them on my hydrogens because hydrogen only needs two. Those are already in the bond. So I'm gonna put them on oxygen. Now my oxygen has two, four, six, eight, valence electrons. I've used six additional ones, so I'm gonna subtract six and end up with zero. So all my terminal atoms are good, but my carbon still only has two, four, six valence electrons. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take this pair of electrons, 
form another bond between oxygen and carbon. I'm going to form that double bond and have two hydrogens still out here. So that would leave oxygen with only two lone pairs of electrons. So I've had 12 to work with, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 total. My hydrogens have the two that they're supposed to have. My carbon has the 2, 4, 6, 8 that it needs. And my oxygen has the 2, 4, 6, 8 that it needs. So that everybody has eight valence electrons.